the splendors of the day will spring of thy revelation show even as thou didst Good morning, Joan. How are you? Coming in from again, Tennessee. Yeah. I always get them she's confused. In, she was in Georgia for a while. She's in Tennessee. But she was in Georgia for a while. I think she's in and now she's in Tennessee. Good morning, Joan. And now this is why we do this. Boom. Card me this year. <laughs> <laughs> well, folks, as you know, I always have to kind of set things up. As you know, what, what, what just happened over there? Uh, <laughs> as, as you know, uh, we are studying, continuing our study from the book, The Fruits of Baha'u'llah's Mission. And uh, I, I neglected to say that we are missing uh, our producer, producer director. director. <laughs> yeah, the lovely and talented Nini Asa. I don't know if she's listening. I don't see anything on, on the Facebook uh, stream. So um, she had to work today. So, but anyway, we miss her. But as you know, we are continuing our study with the, uh, the proofs of, of Baha'u'llah's mission. And today, we are moving forward to uh, another, I don't know, I don't know, another level of, the, of the, this, I don't want to call it an argument, but, but it's making the case that Baha'u'llah is a manifestation of God, and because he meets certain conditions that are a part of being a manifestation of God. And, and those conditions, most importantly, don't apply just to Baha'u'llah. Yes. They apply to all of the manifestations of God. And maybe we need to name them again, name some of them, you know. Sure. Commonly that, that, that you know, they, they are usually known as uh, greater prophets who have actually established world faiths like Jesus Christ and Moses, Moses and Abraham. Uh, and Abraham, yes, and Zoroaster. Yes, Zoroaster. Uh, and and uh, again, Muhammad and Krishna. Uh, and so, again, the way that we are, are, are approaching this is certainly to prove that Baha'u'llah is indeed the manifestation of God for this day. Yes, but also validating the view that all of these uh, founders of world faiths are manifestations of God. So we're not just talking about Baha'u'llah. I mean, obviously, more specifically, to, you know, as we study this book, it's, it's in reference to Baha'u'llah, but it applies to all manifestations of God. And today we are looking at chapter 23 on page 121. 
And uh, the title for today's chapter is His Revelation Raised, excuse me, Illumined Individuals. And some people may have some, I don't know, a little uh, challenge with that word illumined. I think of it as enlightened. Yes. Yes. His Revelation Raised illumined individuals. And today's readings, we're only having three passages. They're lengthy, but three passages. The first is coming from Abdu'l-Baha, and the final two are coming from uh, Baha'u'llah, both of them coming from the uh, Kitabi uh, Ikan, um, which is the uh, the book of certitude, which is, again, the, let me make sure I'm not getting- It's one of the Baha'i holy books. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. yeah. I get the, I get the, the Ikan is, is the book of certitude, correct? Yes, okay, and the octas is the most holy. Right. Okay, all right. So um, let's go ahead and begin. I, I could keep continuing on as I often do. I'm going to shut up and let you get started, Daryl. Thank you. It is easy to bring human bodies under control. A king can bring under his rule and authority the bodies of his subjects throughout a whole country. In former centuries, kings and rulers have absolutely dominated millions of men and have been thereby enabled to carry out whatsoever they desire. If they willed to bestow happiness and peace, they could do so. And if they were determined to inflict suffering and discomfort, they were equally capable. If they desired to send men into the field of battle, none could oppose their authority. And if they decreed their kingdom should enjoy the bliss and serenity of immunity from war, this condition prevailed. In a word, kings and rulers have been able to control millions of human beings and have exercised that dominion with the utmost despotism and tyranny. The point is this, that to gain control over physical bodies is an extremely easy matter. But to bring spirits within the bonds of serenity is a most arduous undertaking. Mm -hmm. This is not the work of everybody. It necessitates a divine and holy potency, the potency of inspiration, the power of the Holy Spirit. For example, Christ was capable of leading spirits into that abode of serenity. He was capable of guiding hearts into that haven of rest. From the day of his manifestation to the present time, he has been resuscitating hearts and quickening spirits. Hmm. He has exercised that vivifying influence, that life-giving influence in the realm of hearts and spirits. Therefore, his resuscitating is everlasting. In this century, of the latter times, Baha'u'llah has appeared and so resuscitated spirits that they have manifested powers more than human. Thousands of his followers have given their lives and while under the sword shedding their blood, they have proclaimed Ya Baha'u'llah. Mm -hmm. Such resuscitation is impossible except through a heavenly potency a supernatural power, the divine power of the Holy Spirit. Through a natural and mere human power, this is impossible. Anything you'd like to expound upon from that uh, passage, uh, Daryl? I just read it. How about if you expound okay. on it? <laughs> I'm, in the mood. I'm in the mood to do some expounding if you don't mind. <laughs> I was just waiting for you to say, I, I, got, stop I got ready to <laughs> no, notice that Abdul Baha. <laughs> he gets into, I mean, he, he, he points out that, you know, force, brute power, you know, has often been used to, uh, you know, to, I'll, I'll to use control. the word to subjugate, yeah, to yes. control millions of people. And if you have, again, the authority or the, the wherewithal, the means to do it, it's not that hard to do. Right. But he's differentiating between those world rulers who have done this. You know, I can say, you know, the Napoleons and others who have done this through brute power and maybe the Genghis Khans and we can name others. 
And he's saying, but the manifestations of God, they don't do it that way. They don't do it. They attract people with the power of the spirit. And he starts by using Jesus Christ as an example, or at least within his, the point he's making, he uses Jesus Christ as an example. In fact, Abdu'l-Bahá not only says, he, he, he says it necessitates. So you don't get people to follow you without force unless you have. It necessitates a divine and holy potency, the potency of inspiration, the power of the Holy Spirit. That's the distinction. Yes, exactly. That's the distinction. And then he brings in Jesus Christ as his example. He says, for example, Christ was capable of leading spirits. I love these, these terms that he uses into the abode of serenity, the haven of rest. From the, and, and he says, it's not over yet. From the, the, the effect of Christ's you know, uh, 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 influence, it's not over yet. From the day of his manifestation to, to the, the present day. time, that's right. he has been resuscitating hearts and quickening spirits. His resuscitating is everlasting. But, and maybe I shouldn't say but, but <laughs> in addition to that, we bring in Baha'u'llah. He says, in this century of the latter times, in fact, you know, I, I, I read that phrase, the latter times, and I wonder, does he just mean most recently? Yes. Okay, because I'm thinking latter times, end times, but no, no. in this century of the latter times, Baha'u'llah has appeared. And again, using the example of Jesus Christ as a reference, He's now referring to Baha'u'llah as having had the same effect and continuing to have the same effect. Baha'u'llah has appeared and so resuscitated spirits that they have manifested powers more than human. Thousands of his followers have given their lives, have given their lives. And while under the sword, shedding their blood, they are proclaimed, Ya Baha'u'llah, and that is a joyous, ex, you know, uh, exclamation. Yes, right. yes, yes. That's 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 a joyful statement. Yabahallah. He then says, basically, this is impossible except through a heavenly potency, a supernatural power. So again, he used the example of Jesus Christ, and now he's referring that same example to uh, Baha'u'llah. And so this again is to to show that again, Baha'u'llah is. A manifestation of God, who has a, as the as our text points out, as the, is entitled, who has a specific mission for today. Right. That went longer than I thought, but uh, I got okay. a too much into. It. And among the evidences of the truth of His manifestation were the ascendancy, the transcendent power, and supremacy which He, the Revealer of being and manifestation of the adored has unaided and alone revealed throughout the world. No sooner had that eternal beauty revealed itself and rent asunder the veil of concealment than the signs of the ascendancy, the might, the sovereignty and power emanating from that essence of essences and the sea of seas were manifested in every land. Okay, now so now, much now, so. Now. Let me not let me finish. <laughs> so much so that from every city there appeared the signs and evidences, the tokens, the testimonies of that divine luminary. Okay, I can read this, and uh, I'm thinking, okay, can you? And this is, of course, a rhetorical question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Can you remember when you first heard about Baha'u'llah? Yes. Okay. And yet, Abdul Baha here is saying, I'm sorry, Baha'u'llah, not Abdul Baha, Baha'u'llah is saying that no sooner had that eternal beauty revealed himself, meaning the Spirit of God in him, and rent asunder the veil of concealment, 
that the signs of the ascendancy, the might, the sovereignty and power emanating from that essence of essences and sea of seas, that's in capitals, it's references to God, they're references to God, were manifest in every land. land. Why, why can't everybody see it? Or is, is, is that too big a question to, should we, I mean, I can still remember the time I didn't see it, or at least didn't attribute it to any kind of spiritual power. And said so much, so much so that from every city, there appeared the signs, the evidences, the tokens, the testimonies of that divine luminary. Yeah. That's the potency of the message. The potency of the message for each manifestation Keep talking. tends to be that its range, its influence is something far greater than local. It goes all over the world, it, especially in times when there was no media. In Christ's message, for example. Oh, got it. Christ's message went all over the world. You know, all mm -hmm. over the world. And that said that, and, and Christ himself said, this is not for me. Right. Because mm -hmm. if it were simply from him, he might have had a small local influence. I but because you. the message was from God, it went all around the world. I'm so glad Without the so benefit glad. of all of the media that we have now. Yeah. yeah. But the same thing applies to Baha'u'llah's message, to Muhammad's message. They went uh, all their, their messages and the potency of the message went all around the world in a flash. Yeah, I see what you're saying. All at once. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the potency of the message. Okay, now I'm going to stop here because see the camel. Yeah, that's in the Zoom. That's Keely, and Keely asked a question, and the question is, what are we reading? <laughs> oh, okay. It's, it's it's proofs of Baha'u'llah's mission. mission, and we're on chapter twenty-three. And uh, the, the chapter is, is Revelation Raised, Illumined Individuals. This passage that Daryl is currently reading is actually coming from the uh, Kitabi Egon. Uh, so, so there you go, Keely. And welcome. We're glad you're here. She's been here before, hasn't she? Yes. I've seen the camera. I didn't know that was her. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, so, okay. Now, we, we can continue. It's just that, again, reading that, I, I think often always too literally and so i wondered wait a minute are we talking you know we can see it in civilization buildings i don't know i don't know and, and i'm sure that's to included. some extent yes but but, but no we're, we're talking about attracting people to the but through the power of of the holy spirit that's right and that's that's the only thing that could do it that's right okay I, i'm shutting up now <laughs> How many, how many were those pure and kindly hearts which faithful re faithfully reflected the light of that eternal sun and how manifold the emanations of knowledge of that, from that ocean of divine wisdom which encompassed all beings in every city, all the divines and dignitaries rose to hinder and repress them, and girded up the loins of malice, of envy and tyranny for their suppression. How great the number of those holy souls, those essences of justice who accused of tyranny were put to death. Mm. And how many embodiments of purity who showed forth naught but true knowledge <coughs> excuse me, and stainless deeds suffered an agonizing death. Hmm. Notwithstanding all of this, each of these holy beings up to his last moment breathed the name of God and soared in the realm of submission and resignation. Such was the potency and transmuting influence which he exercised over them, that they ceased to cherish and desire but his will, and wedded their soul to his remembrance, Christ on the cross, 
did the same thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Each one of them, same mm -hmm. thing. And, and, you know, I noticed uh, again here where Baha'u'llah, uh, you know, he points out again that you have these people who see the light, if you will, and they follow it often uh, to, you know, and that becomes the reason for their own martyrdom, demise, That's color right. what you want. And so he, he, he again points that out that you have these people, but then you also have the people Those who- Detractors. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the people who refuse to accept it and, and aren't just satisfied with not accepting it. They wanna squash it. Absolutely. He points out in every city, all the divines and dignitaries rose to hinder and repress them and girded up the loins of, and listen to these, girded up the loins of malice, of envy and tyranny for their suppression. And, uh, you know, I still, I read these and I, I know this, these, these, these verses were written in the 1800s, but they could have been written today. Sure. It could have been written today. I'm going to go back here and there's a, there's a little note here. <laughs> oh, sorry, I was late. Oh, that's that's Jim using the community host lobby. Okay, all right, Jim. Uh, okay. Well, we're glad you're here, Jim. All right, shall we go? On? Okay, yes, continue. I don't know. Should we? we uh, one more paragraph. And okay, we'll do so. Reflect who in this world is able to manifest such transcendent power, such pervading influence, all these stainless hearts and sanctified souls have with absolute resignation responded to the summons of his decree. Instead of complaining, they rendered thanks unto God. And amidst the darkness of their anguish, they revealed naught but radiant and radiant acquisition <laughs> Let me, I'm sorry. <laughs> to God. And amidst the darkness of their anguish, they revealed naught but radiant acquiescence to his will. I like the fact that he asked that question. It's like, who else to do this? Who in this world is able to manifest such transcendent power, such pervading influence? I mean, who else? All of these stainless hearts and sanctified souls have with absolute resignation responded to the summons of his decree. And I felt guilty when I read the next line. Instead of complaining, <laughs> instead of complaining, they rendered thanks unto God. And amidst the darkness of their anguish, they revealed not, nothing but radiant acquiescence. They gave in to the will of God. And that's basically what we're all being asked to do and not being for, faced with the possibility of martyrdom. You know, I don't know. Do yes, you do. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> People are running around every day, wondering why things are changing so fast. Don't know what to do, don't know what to say. Got so many questions to ask. From pillar to post, from coast to coast. Confusion all across the land. A hidden word is what I'd like to say. But tell me, would you listen, my friend? And I'm so glad. I know about the blessed beauty, so glad I know about the blessed beauty. I just want, I want, I want to praise his name. So much depression, so much aggression, what's real, who can you trust? Is the purpose of life all struggle and strife? 
Does it end in ashes and dust? God really cares, he hears your prayers. If you'd only take time to pray, if you can't find the word, you can still be heard. He knows what you're trying to say, and that's why I'm so glad. I know about the blessed beauty, so glad I know about the blessed beauty. I just want, I want, I want to praise his name. chose to join us even though you're under the weather. We hope you feel better soon. Okay, Daryl. Okay. Amongst the proofs demonstrated, the truth of his revelation is this, that in every age and dispensation, whenever the invisible essence was revealed in the person of his manifestation, certain souls, obscure and detached from all worldly entanglements would seek illumination from the sun of prophethood and moon of divine guidance and would attain unto the divine presence. For this reason, the divines of the age and those possessed of wealth would scorn and scoff at these people. Even as he had revealed concerning them that erred, then said the chiefs of his people who believed not, we see in thee but a man like ourselves, and we see not any who have followed thee except 
our meanest ones of hasty judging, nor see we any excellence in you above ourselves. Nay, we deem you liars. They caviled at those holy manifestations and protested saying, none hath followed you except the abject amongst us, mm -hmm. those who are worthy of no attention. Their aim was to show that no one amongst the learned, the wealthy, and the renowned believed in them. By this and similar proofs, they sought to demonstrate the falsify and demonstrate the falsity of him that speaketh not but the truth. So this is saying that, you know, even though the manifestations come up, there is still that contingent that does not want to believe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the, the way that they say not to believe, or they try to convince other people not to believe, to say, hey, all we see is a man. Yeah. And the people who are believing in you are people that we don't trust, people yeah. that we don't like, or people yeah. we don't we don't want to believe. Uh -huh. <laughs> there, there, so, and, and a lot of times, I notice he said, uh, certain souls obscure, and, and he also says, and detached from all worldly entanglements. But my eyes really went to the obscure. A lot of these people are, in social terms, they're the nobodies. Yeah. You know, a lot of them are. There's my watch again, I think, going off. Yeah. For some reason, it thinks I'm trying to work out. I'm not. So basically, it's just saying, you know, we don't want to believe in this. And then anyone who does believe in you is somebody that we don't, we're not going to pay attention to. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. In this most splendid dispensation, however, this most mighty sovereignty, a number of illumined divines of men, of consummate learning, of doctors, of mature wisdom, have attained unto his court, drunk the cup of his divine presence and been invested with the honor of his most excellent favor. They have renounced for the sake of the beloved, the world and all that is therein. It's called detachment. Yes, yes. All these were guided by the light of that son of divine revelation, confessed and acknowledged his truth. Such was their faith that most of them renounced their substance and kindred, and cleave to the good pleasure of the old glories. They lay down their lives for their well-beloved and surrendered their all in his path. Their breaths, their breasts were made targets for the darts of the enemy, mm -hmm. and their heads adorned the spears of the infidel. No land remained which did not drink the blood of these embodiments of detachment. And no sword did not bruise their necks. Their deeds alone testified to the truth of their words. Doth not the testimony of these holy souls who have so gloriously risen to offer up their lives for their beloved, that the whole world marveled at the manner of their sacrifice, mm -hmm. suffice the people of this day, is it not sufficient witness against the faithlessness of those who for a trifle betrayed their faith, who bartered away immortality for that which perishes, who gave up their qatar of the divine presence for salty springs, and whose one aim in life is to usurp the property of others? Mm. Even as thou dost witness how all of them have busied themselves with the vanities of the world and have strayed far from him who is the Lord, the Most High. Be fair. Be fair is the testimony of those acceptable and worthy of attention, whose deeds agree with their words, whose outward behavior conforms with their inner life. The mind is bewildered at their deeds, and the soul marveleth at their fortitude and bodily endurance. Or is the testimony of these faithless souls who breathe not but the breath of the selfish, breath of selfish desire, and who lie imprisoned 
in the cage of their idle fancies acceptable? I hear <laughs> these, I, I, these are all questions. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And it's like how a lot to me is saying, "Who are you going to believe? Yeah. Who are you going to believe?" You know, I mean, what what is enough? Uh, for lack of a better word, what's enough proof for you? Okay, you've got these people. Um, he's saying they laid down their lives for their well-beloved and surrendered their all in his path. Their breasts were made targets for the darts of the enemy. Uh, moving further down, their deeds alone testify to the truth of their words. Doth not the testimony of these holy souls who have so gloriously risen to offer up their lives for their beloved that the whole world marveled at the matter of their sacrifice, doth not that testimony suffice the people of this day? Isn't that enough? And then he says, is it not sufficient witness against, and he's juxtaposing now, again, the, you know, I'll say the positive against the negative. Is it not sufficient witness against the faithlessness of those who for a trifle betrayed their faith, who bartered away immortality for that which perishes, yeah. who gave up the Cathar of the, and I'm not sure I'm saying that word right. I looked it up, but I, I didn't get the, the definition. I got the definition, but not the, the pronunciation. Is it Qatar or Qatar? Yeah, it's Qatar. Okay, Qatar. And it's a river in paradise. Who gave up the Qatar of the divine presence or salty springs. <laughs> yeah. That's why it's important that I said, well, this is a kind of a strange uh, 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 you know, comparison or salty springs. You've got this river in paradise or salty springs. Which would you prefer? Yeah. And whose one aim in life is to usurp the property of others. Their main thing is taking taking property, taking other people's things. Even as thou dost witness how all of them have busied themselves with the vanities of the world and have strayed far from him who is the Lord the Most High. So again, who are you going to believe? Yeah. These selfless people or these selfish people? These people who are giving up their lives for uh, you know for something lofty, or these people? who are giving up everlasting life for material, for taking others, for selfishness, greed, et cetera. Yeah. These holy lights, for 18 years, heroically endured the showers of afflictions which from every side have rained upon them. With what love, what devotion, what exaltation and holy rapture, they sacrificed their lives in the path of the old glories. To the truth of this all witness, to the truth of this all witness, and yet how can they belittle this revelation? Has any age witnessed such momentous happenings? If these companions be not the true strivers after God, who else could be called by this name? Mm. I'm going to repeat that. If these companions be not the true strivers after God, who else could be called by this name? Have these companions been seekers after power or glory? Have they? That's 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 a, that's an incredible question. Yes. Because in most cases, that's what it is. Exactly. The There's another question, though. You got to put that there, too. <laughs> Have they ever yearned for riches? Ego. Have they cherished any desire except the good pleasure of God? If these companions, with all their marvelous testimonies and wondrous works, be false, who then is worthy to claim himself the truth? I swear by God, their very deeds are a sufficient testimony and an irrefutable proof unto the, all the peoples of the earth were men to ponder in their hearts the mysteries of divine revelation. You know what I'm thinking now? Well, the, 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 there's, the questions are... are very clear. Yeah. I, I love you know, Have they cherished any, any desire except for the good pleasure of God? Right. Well, 
you know, where they seek who's after power. Yes. And, you know, yes. Where, these companions, that, and, yeah. and if you look at who the detractors are of every manifestation, they are people who are afraid that they're going to lose some control or lose some influence or lose their, their ability to control certain yeah. segments of their yeah. society or their, or their world around them. They are all afraid that they're going to lose that power, right. and therefore they become the greatest detractors right. of right. the manifestation. Exactly. And I have, I, I, again, those two questions. Have these companions been seekers after power or glory? Have they ever yearned for riches? riches. And like you said, yeah. it's it's like, okay, if we can look at these people who are willing to give up their lives, often their lives, I refer to them, the nobodies of society. But also, in this particular case, it points out, in this particular case, uh, this most mighty sovereignty, a number of illumined divines, of men of consummate learning, of doctrines of mature wisdom, have attained unto his court, drunk the cup of his divine presence, and been invested with the honor of his most excellent favor. They have renounced the world and all that is within for the sake of the beloved. And yet, again, he's still comparing those people who are willing to give up everything for the sake of their beloved. Again, uh, these illumined people who simply want to follow God and are willing to give up everything. Yep. Compared to those who, again, uh, again, what were those two questions? Have, have these companions been seekers after power or glory? Have they ever yearned for riches? And he says, if these companions, it's well, but that third question, have they cherished any desire except the good pleasure of God? If these companions, with all their marvelous testimonies and wondrous works, be false, who then is worthy to claim for himself the truth? Their very deeds are a sufficient testimony. I tell you what, while I'm reading this, I'm thinking, come Jesus, you shall know them by their deeds. Yeah, or by their fruits. By Maybe their it's fruits. deeds, fruits, the same thing. <laughs> but yeah, it's, again, look at, at how this is playing out. And again, the whole title of this chapter, his revelation raised illumined individuals. individuals that's right. And so that in and of itself, is a proof that Baha'u'llah, again, is today's manifestation of God. Wow. Okay, sir. We have reached. Yeah, I know. I know it's time. I'm looking at time and I'm like. the end of this passage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it is time for our Cambys moment. Yeah, anyone who would like to. Choose to offer a prayer else. or a song or passage. This is that time. So, of course, as always, and you know what? I'm still popping up because that's what I'm used to doing. I, I forgot we had this. We are going to go to our Cambys moment. Good morning, Cambys. How are you? You're still muted. Don't forget to unmute yourself. How about now? Oh, there okay. you go. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, please, Cambys. Sure, thank you. Hey, 
mes abandons, ton saint con, va be pour chatons, attends, 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 بیماری از ما شفا از تو بپوش و بیاموز وفا کن پناه ده شفا بخش